is waiting on fries that you don't get it? You don't, what do you mean you don't get waiting on fries? Hopefully the customer never hears waiting on fries, but all this time on the entree and it's perfectly executed and then you're it's like, ready to go. I forgot to fire the fries. I just always use that when I forgot to put somebody's order in and I was like, hey, I'm just waiting on the fries. It's going to be two more minutes. Realistically, I come back 10 minutes with the food. Exactly. <laughs> they just know that their food's not there in the service that they're still waiting on fries. I guess we're just waiting on fries. <laughs> So this week, this week uh, we got Mike sitting in with us. Mike is the head chef of Smokehouse Tilgate Grill in Marinick. Like all of had him just gets right down to business. We didn't even know the show's about to start. And just, well, this week, here we go. I was trying to keep us focused. That's usually Jay's job, but he's upset this week. What about? I'm not. What I'm about not. the presenting sponsor and all that stuff? I guess this week's episode is also brought to us by Smokehouse. Yeah, so we we pay a lot of money. For so we pulled Mike out of the kitchen. He was back there. He was doing things. I, actually, I don't even think he was back there doing things at all. He came through the front door, didn't he? I, he, I was actually off tonight, but I am usually doing things, if that's what you want to know. <laughs> and, and those things entail, like, what's your role here in Smokehouse? Uh, it's actually fun, because we haven't really brought Mike in real. Exactly. You know, we reference his name all the time, and people are like, who the hell is this other partner, Mike guy, that's never here talking shit you with the You can tell Justin's a little bit down about having to share the Smokehouse spotlight tonight. <laughs> but <laughs> That's usually the case, though. It happens. <laughs> So what are your roles here, though? Uh, I'm the co-owner, co-owner of uh, Smokehouse with Justin and spend most days in the kitchen. That's it. Uh, yeah, it made that's... it sound so easy. Yeah, <laughs> he just stands around in the kitchen. I He's partially like own Smokehouse, anything. and I just do things in the kitchen. Uh, I, I started Smokehouse with Justin uh, about 13 years ago, and I guess my role has changed a little bit over time, but for the most days, I'm behind the line cooking or expo. 13 years ago was like 2007. Seven. Yep. It's 2020. It should be an even, yep, yep, yep. nice, easy <laughs> math for you. So, like, yeah, but all right. So, this might as well kind of be the Smokehouse episode at the end of the day, right? Like, we're covering a lot of things here, and we can cover some of this, this history. This could be because, the Smokehouse episode, yeah. Because so right. many changes have happened through Smokehouse's time when you guys first opened this thing up is two young studs uh, where you were like, hey, we're going to have this chili dog spot and call it Smokehouse. <laughs> Yeah, something like that. Yeah. It was something like that, right? <laughs> so, like, it, you know, you started not, I feel like almost not even having, like, a culinary background at that point. I had, I had very yeah. little culinary experience. I think Justin had the most culinary background because he was coming from Outback. And that's, that's saying something. Yeah. As a bartender. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you guys, had, you guys had a pretty extensive kitchen training. That's something that we talked about yeah. a lot. Yeah. You, you had a little bit of a background. And we, actually, when we first opened, he the, did work the, our, our business plan, which I, I still have printed somewhere, <laughs> is actually uh, I'm the business manager or so, like the front of house kind of guy, and Justin was supposed to run the kitchen. Yep. Oh, and wow. That lasted about a week. No, I, think, I think it was a good month. No, it did not last Stop. a month. Uh, I think it lasted four days, if I remember. Jesus. Uh, yeah. And then you just were fed up with him putting out subpar quality <laughs> things in the kitchen. You said, I need to get back there to get things working right? You know, it was, it was a real small place when we first opened, and it was a lot of like, Everybody did everything kind of thing. And uh, eventually, I don't know, just kind of like the schedule just kind of stuck with me back there for a while, I guess. I don't, it's probably changed a lot over, you know. I started years. questioning my life decisions, to be honest. <laughs> Spending all the time in the kitchen. <laughs> <That's what happened. laughs> Basically, One Justin night on the grill. Just, just throwing sliders coming like, out and talking to people. <laughs> and uh, eventually, you know, someone needs to produce the food. So you wind up just staying back there. And I, I wound up liking it. And uh, you I just wound up liking it. Kind of just wind up doing it. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. It's it's actually not that different from how most people get started in the kitchen, except you just kind of like the fall owner. into a role. Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of guys too. They they come up by working in somewhere like Outback or Applebee's or whatever it is. You're getting training from corporate, which honestly, at the end of the day, is always great training because these guys have spent fortunes on developing these training programs for people to actually put out some type of quality or educate somebody that doesn't know something. Or not so necessarily coming, quality, but consistency. Sure, consistency. And I feel like that was a slight, but you know, yeah, 20, 20 years ago, Outback, <laughs> Outback was I, good quality. I didn't mean it as a slight, and I do respect Outback's quality from Not anymore. Day. No, not anymore. You don't from have to respect the They had the frozen the vegetable medley. Like, <laughs> what quality <laughs> are you respecting right now? Back not, in the day. Not back to sidetrack, but I saw a Pizza Hut ad pop up on my Instagram feed today, <laughs> and it looked like it was like a beautiful coal fire pie or something. And I, like, thought twice about it for a second, and I was like, you know what, that about might actually be, like, all right. No, Does I didn't. Does Pizza Hut still exist? I'm sorry. Yeah, it, I just told they, you they I, got this, I got this okay. promotion in my Instagram feed. <laughs> okay. Uh, so not coming from, like, just told you those I just told you it exists. <laughs> I, I didn't know if it was real or not. I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you even listen to me when I talk? It's so ridiculous. I heard Domino's is actually doing well through uh Yeah, they've actually done well. I, I really? believe it. Do you have stock in Domino's? I don't. 
we're not basing it on stock. We're just basing it on in general. Yeah, I mean, they they have the delivery module set up. <laughs> Everybody's oh. ordering delivery. I think that this time was like the time for all those places that didn't need in-house. Like resurrect dining. a little bit yeah. while everyone was selling off their stocks. Like next thing you know, earnings report comes out and they go, holy shit, these guys have been selling pies this whole time during COVID. So when you guys started Smokehouse and Justin somehow was in the back for no reason at all <laughs> and you flipped rolls, at that point you had like a couple different chili dogs and some fries. People could come in almost like a deli to some extent. Lunch counter. Lunch yeah. counter set up. I mean, actually, when the original idea, the original plan or concept for the, for the restaurant was like a place that was almost like supposed to be a soup kitchen that featured all different kinds of chili. And truth in my original menu had 50 chilies on yep. it. I swear to God. I had no idea how to produce <laughs> these chilies or how to keep them hot. We didn't buy a steam table nope. or anything like that. And it kind of got whittled down and uh, things like that. And then... You know, we, we opened with, yeah, kind of like what you said, chili dogs and things like that. And little by little, it's, it's changed over time and evolved as kind of like our uh, knowledge of food has evolved. And eventually it is what it is today. But it's gone through a lot of ups and downs. In that process, though, of going from, all right, I've got this cool kick-ass name for a chili. I've got a dope idea for what this chili is going to be like. And you didn't know how to make it. There must have been a lot of experimentation going on in that kitchen. <laughs> and you said that Just was behind the kitchen for a month doing some experimentation with you. Fun, fun fact, uh, the, our first chili recipe was actually my recipe. Yeah, it is. The, ori- the, the original, original chili, chili recipe, yeah. which is, it still get asked for and everything. It, <laughs> it, it's not on our menu currently, but uh, it get asked for a lot. And we, we made it We made it during, uh, during the pandemic for people. Yeah, That's kind of legit. Yeah, yeah. Is this going to resurface to the menu eventually? That's his call. Because uh, he's the kitchen guy now. <laughs> now it's there yeah, now. Got it. It'll most likely be better. You know what? Th- that recipe <laughs> has stood the test of time. i got to be honest. Like, oh. that recipe is, like, kind of tried and true. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not saying there weren't years where I'm like, you know, we can make this better, and I've played around with, like, short rib chilies <laughs> and all kinds of different things. Tiger blood chili? Tiger blood <laughs> chili. <laughs> and, but that recipe is just, is just good, man. That is a good recipe. I mean, it's a good no bean, you know, put it on your burger, put it on your fries type of chili. It's good. Okay. I'll have to invest into getting some of this chili. You uh, never tried it? You never had it before? I don't think I ever had it. Wow. Oh, you know what I did, actually? I was, that's when I first moved to New Rochelle, where this location was, of course, in New York. And I was so sick. And I was like, yo, I need soup. I need (laughs) soup. And I was also high as shit. And I called, and I was like, I'll take the chili. (laughs) I got home and I opened the thing up and I'm like, ah, it's not soup, that's chili. (laughs) It was a mess. It was a complete mess. But so now, today to fast forward, what would we just say? 12, 13 years later. And now Smokehouse Mamaronic exists, which in between that Smokehouse version two, right? We, we've softly talked about this before, where Smokehouse version one was the chili dog. And where then... Where are we on with this? I'm just saying how many versions the evolution of Smokehouse, of Smokehouse. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Different okay. iterations of Smokehouse. So two was after the chili dogs and you became more of a full-blooded restaurant in New Rochelle. I think two would probably be the transition or the slow transition to barbecue from like wings yeah. and chili and whatnot. Yeah. No, yeah. because barbecue really wasn't a piece of the thing at all. Not no, at all. Not, no, the beginning. No, not in the original menu. <laughs> yeah. We honestly, I mean, I hate admitting this, but we just thought Smokehouse was a cool name. <laughs> yeah. I, I really hate admitting it. I would love to have a different story, but you, know, you just got to be honest about it. Yeah. And we thought Smokehouse chili was cool. Yeah, and, listen, um, not, and people would come in and, and they'd ask us about our barbecue. <laughs> yeah, barbecue and place? truthfully, nope. we didn't we didn't make it. We didn't have a smoker when we first opened, yeah. you know. And it, and then eventually we got one, and we've upgraded our smokers over the years. But um, we didn't start smoking food for at least four years. We or had so. we had the smoker for like a year before we even started. Yeah, using it. yeah. I remember yeah. I'd ask you something like, "Yo, Mike, so we start using that smoker today?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it took a while. It took so a why'd while. you have the smoker? Plans. We had big plans. We that's, big how we, plans. that's how we do things. Yeah. Okay. Just you have to like, just jump you know, in. Get Before it going. you know how to do it, just right. jump in. Yeah. It's a lot of... Ju- I mean, like, when we got the original smoker, we didn't even, like, get one that would, like, be easily programmed. Or, like, we got one that, you know, the wood didn't even fit in it. Yeah. So we were ordering quarts of wood. And, and you had to prior to the shift, you had to go chop your wood, you know? And, like, Anum would come in for a shift at 4 o'clock, and I'd be like, all right, I cut, you know, like, 
20 logs of wood, you should be good to go for the shift. Like, it really wasn't organized, you know. And, I remember uh, the Sunday mornings when we were uh, working on the ribs before we got them nailed down. Every Sunday, I'd get in at, like, 7 o'clock. My first hour would be just cutting wood so I could cook these ribs to be ready at 4 o'clock. Yeah, that's kind of the way it was, you yeah. know, so... Even though we weren't a real barbecue restaurant, we were a real fucking we, barbecue we restaurant. Through, we were going through the motions. Yeah, <laughs> I love that's like a that's also kind of a dope story. It's it is rough and rugged. Is. Yeah, uh, yeah. you got to put in the effort. That's what brings you through, I guess, the motions to to persevere into the next the next bit. Yeah. So, in barbecue's not just as easy as throwing it into the smoker though. Now no, either, right? So. Let's talk about that. <laughs> like, how do you educate yourself into doing barbecue well and doing it right at that point? There's this thing called the internet. Have you, uh... <laughs> the YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> I was on the YouTube. No, nah, I mean, truthfully, it's a lot Google. of, like, a lot of tr- try, try process. I got to be honest. Like, it really wasn't a lot of Google back then. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it was a lot of just, like, putting things in. And it was a lot of, like, just times where things didn't come out right. And yeah. you just kind of, like, kept working on it. Like, we've been open 13 years. I don't know. I can, still today, I, I'm not really happy with it. Like, Justin <laughs> jokes all the time that... I feel like I, I finally am happy with the brisket. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, it didn't take 13 years because we didn't have brisket on the menu originally. Right. But it took about nine years for me to be happy with, like, actually what we're producing each day. And i got to be honest, in five years from now, I probably won't be happy with it again. Yeah. Five weeks from now. <laughs> no, I'm going to be happy for a while. We really, we really, happy for a while. We really got it down, i got to be honest. Well, know? just, just it, last week was actually praising your name. I'm surprised that your ears weren't itching uh, the, last week while we were recording. The ribs that putting out. I've been nice recently. Yeah, he said he said you've been on fire. In well, fact, that's what we're talking about—the brisket and the ribs. Yeah. yeah. You know, tr- truthfully, it's a lot of the guys back there. You know, that's honestly the thing is like just we've been working on a lot of things, but it's really them like kind of taking it to heart and really following some of the stuff we worked at. It's not as simple. Ask anybody who works in a barbecue restaurant as writing a recipe and or any restaurant really for that matter, and then just telling somebody else to execute it. There's just a lot of variables in barbecue as there is in a lot of food. I mean, it all comes down to like time and temperature and airflow and things like that. But uh, having somebody really like just kind of pay attention and be like, have a lot of pride in when the brisket comes out every day. I mean, truthfully, like the guy I'm talking about right now is this guy Perez, who's just been like really into getting the brisket right. And we've both been like kind of like working on it a lot, but he's like really taken it from what I wanted to do. To like actually getting it right every single day at four o'clock. So take somebody like me that knows really not anything about cooking a brisket. Were are the steps involved into actually cooking this brisket, kind of getting it right, so to speak, without giving away the smokehouse <laughs> secret sauce, of course. I, I don't know if you know us, but we have like no secrets. Like we're like really the barbecue open. recipe is like yeah, loosely written. Our normal. recipe is really like I swear, <laughs> people email me all the time, how do you make this? I just send them the recipe. Like I, I really don't believe in secrets. I think barbecue is very communicative whatever the word is, communicative Communicative. <laughs> communal. <laughs> communal. Yeah, communal. Yeah. You know, like uh, it, it's really not about like knowing some secret recipe. I mean, you could look up world championship barbecue recipes. It's really about like the process. having the discipline to yeah. doing it every day. And it's not about having the right pit or anything, which is what I've learned over time. It, it's about like being really good at your smoker. So what what are those steps at the end of the day to to make brisket happen? I it, it's <laughs> it starts with sourcing. You know, uh, probably. I don't know if first and foremost is the right word, but if you're not sourcing the right meat, you're not. I think first and foremost, yeah. this choice you in know. prime is that yeah, a thing. So why don't you tell the people where you're getting your brisket from? What are you getting? Now? Yeah, so uh, and we're we're selecting a certified Angus prime. Um, we've played around with a bunch of different types of briskets, and uh, I mean, really, what barbecue comes down to is is traditionally taking a tough piece of meat and really making it flavorful. Like brisket was the meat they would throw away. The same way like lobster used to be like served to prisons and things like that. Yeah. And people like thought of ways to like make this great. And that's like kind of what I love about barbecue. But at the same point, like if you get a better piece of meat, <laughs> you have a better chance of producing a better barbecue. Um, and I think that's big in today's barbecue is actually sourcing your meat, whereas before it really wasn't. Um, and, then, and then trimming, you know, like really taking the right fat content off of it. And then really... So there's like there's such thing as taking too much fat away or leaving too much fat on the brisket. Definitely, for sure, one hundred percent. You want like every bite to have a little bite of fat on it, but too much fat rendered is just not good, or not too much fat rendered. Too much fat left on the product will not render enough, okay. and then it's just not a tasty piece of meat. Okay, because then it's yeah. just like eating a chunk of fat at yeah. that point. Okay, and so you're sourcing now, you're trimming. Well, we always trim, but it's, it's about really like trimming correctly. And then uh, one thing we've learned in our particular pit is uh, placement in the smoker. 
and allowing for the right airflow, like even putting the point of the brisket versus the flat of the brisket on the right shelf, but even putting that point in the correct way to allow airflow out and allowing like an even airflow over the over the fat to basically create just a consistent smoke product at the end of it. So now I've seen the smoker in the back too. It's got Tiny. tons of, sh- I mean, to me, it's pretty damn big and it's got <laughs> oh, a bunch you, of shelves You're on talking it. about Dino. That's the okay. one that we go on the road with. The one in no, the, smoke, no, no. In the no, smoker. I'm saying the one right back here. That's it's about as small. This is about as small a smoker as you can have in the barbecue industry. It's like and a fridge. Exactly. Yeah. And it's challenging to do it. But if you ask any like real barbecue guy, it, it doesn't matter what you're cooking on. It's about like learning that, that smoker and getting the best barbecue you can produce in that smoker. Okay, so you can only maybe put XX amount of brisket in that smoker once then near that shelf area yeah. to kind of get that airflow. Yeah, how many can you fit in there when you're doing it properly now? So, like, I mean, if we were to take the whole smoker, we could probably fit eight or nine eight or nine briskets in it. But we truthfully do two a day and, like, during the pandemic, just one a day. Um, and so you got to, like, play to your strengths. Like, all right, we have a small smoker. We have a small space to do it. Let's make it perfect and sell out quick. You know, like if we had a huge place like some of these big barbecue places, we would obviously do more. But there's different, you know what I mean, uh, things that they're facing that we're not facing, you know. So it goes in the smoker. Well, no, no, no. You're, you're, you're <laughs> so, skipping a step. So we've got seasoning. We, we, yeah. <laughs> we've sourced, we've trimmed, and now we're going to season. Yeah. And uh, that's... <laughs> The, been, been the biggest thing that truthfully when we were serving chili dogs and fries and stuff as much as I love them there's no way I would have known to do this and that's just like subtra- addition by subtraction yeah. you know it's basically stop over seasoning I for years I just kept looking for like this big bite of flavor like I kept thinking hey, what if we put this on I'd be up all night googling like <laughs> maple bourbon pecan you know rubs and stuff like that and like over the time you realize like you want to taste the meat you yeah. know what I mean and it kind of like I hope in 10 years I'll even, like, understand this more. But, like, right now I've, like, really appreciated what the meat tastes like when you do it right. And truthfully, it's, it's salt and pepper very, very evenly and the right grain of salt and pepper. And, like, we switched to a 16-mesh pepper, which is basically like a butcher's grade pepper. It's not gigantic. It's not a, um, a whole, uh, pepper a whole, corn. whole peppercorn yeah. or anything like that. But <laughs> over a long smoking process... It breaks down and, and just creates, like, an awesome flavor, you know. If I was doing something smaller, like, I wouldn't put that on my wings. But uh, on a big piece of meat, like a brisket, it's, like, perfect. And you're not doing uh, granulated you don't need any garlic anymore? Just no, salt and pepper? Salt and pepper. Very nice. Yeah. And we don't sauce it anymore as well. Like, for years, we sauced it because we thought that was cool. Because <laughs> he thought you needed Me and you sauce. worked on our sauce recipe yep. for years. And, like, it's the same recipe. We haven't changed that. But, uh we would never put sauce on a brisket anymore. Good for you. Yeah. We always used to say that was because you didn't feel confident enough that the brisket exactly. was good enough to stand yeah. on its own. Yeah. So now that you don't do that, that means... And I think even years you know. before that, we started just putting a little sauce. We would only do things like brisket, you know, melts and yeah. brisket quesadillas and things like that because we just thought, like, that's what people wanted. Yep. And, like, the more we got good on it, the more you have a little confidence in the product mm-hmm. and the just more put you it on just the plate and give it to put them. it on the plate and say, like, I worked hard on this. It's, it's freaking it's awesome. It's going to melt in your mouth, like, yeah. you know. You said something, too, just a second ago that in bar world is kind of similar with what's happening where you're saying that you're looking for that blast of flavor and you don't always really need that, you know, orgasmic uh, bite that you think exists. It's not always necessarily the case, but with cocktails, too, where you just said you'd be Googling maple bourbon glazes and things like that. Scotch and blue cheese. It's like, sure. <laughs> and, and, is that know, a thing? You still, laugh at, is. You, you still laugh at this. One of the top bartenders in the world is trying to figure this thing out, right? Yeah. So, like, it, it'll get figured out at some point, and yeah. we'll make that recipe when it exists. <laughs> All right. uh, but regardless, is we start to lose our bounds, though, on the bar side of things, where everyone's trying to one-up each other and do some other fantastic, yeah. spectacular taste uh, where you don't even really taste the spirit anymore whatsoever. And you have to remember just to kind of tone it back a little bit. Dial it down. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we actually had a conversation about going forward with our cocktail program, too, just to that, and try to make more cocktails that are three, four ingredients max that just highlight what you said, highlight the spirit of it and keep it simple and one, crank yeah. it out a little Speed. faster, you know, yep. and two, it's just, if you use quality ingredients, the same thing, cocktails, the same thing. If you use yeah. quality ingredients, let it stand up. Yeah, I mean, it there's nothing better than a cocktail nerd that's like, oh, I've used a lavender reduction into this cocktail. <laughs> yeah. like, Shut up and give me my bourbon, please, <laughs> you know? 
Uh, but I guess that is quite similar. But now we got to circle back here to s- secure these steps here because I'm missing some things. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to send you the recipe. Yeah, now, t- now we finished seasoning, so now we're probably going to go into the smoker. We're going into the smoker Okay, now, and you yeah. go into the smoker now for how long? Well, so time and temperature would be the biggest factors. Exactly. So and this low is, and slow? Low and slow. Is that where that comes rule. from? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, barbecue is definitely low and slow, but this you is You buy that time Marshalls? <laughs> <laughs> This is where the recipe kind of gets thrown out the window. And this is where, like, the cook or, you know, the person, the pit master, whatever you want to call the person, you know, uh, skill or talent or just observations, like, yeah. really, you know, come in handy. And it, it's not a 12-hour set it and forget it. You pull it out when it's done. Um, you can keep it on the exact same temperature and the exact amount of time. But the amount of times you open your smoker changes the whole thing so like on a busy day if we're putting in racks and racks of ribs below the brisket that's gonna that's gonna shift it so like it's about watching you know how much fat is rendered off the off the piece of meat uh how much evaporated cooling is happening uh, which starts to happen about five hours into the cook and when you want to wrap um which we want to write this down for your recipe (laughs) notes um it would be the next step but the wrap is... So we basically wrap in straight butcher paper. Uh, it's one of the things we changed also in the last couple of years is we got away from aluminum foil. It was just creating too much steam and uh, losing some of our bark. So we went, to, we went to butcher paper pretty much for everything right now. So it breathes, I guess? Yeah, it allows a little, little breathe. It allows a little bit of the juices and things like that to stay in there without uh, boiling those juices, like creating steam. Okay. The, even, even like the millimeter of space between the the meat and the wrapper and the aluminum foil. So then 12 hours later? Yeah, kind of like, so like basically uh, the well, first- What are you looking for before you wrap it? So like, how do you know you've gotten to the step where you're, you're looking? Wrap? You're looking for a really good quality bark at that point. You're not looking for it to be black, mm-hmm. but basically um, the process that creating the smoke ring that everybody wants to see will stop happening after the first, I mean, depends on the, the temperature and everything, but about four hours. Smoke really only adheres to that process for about four hours. And then after that, you're really cooking your meat. Mm-hmm. And then that's the part where you really just don't want to screw it up. You've created that bark. You've created that smoke ring. You've created all those like juices that people want to see. And now you really don't want to screw it up. So you want to cook the brisket all the way through without screwing up what you just did. So the smoke ring only will penetrate so far is 100%, what you're kind of saying. 100%. Yeah. Do you still run into having to educate the consumer on the smoke ring and being like, no, it's cooked. This is a smoke ring or are we past that Only now? with chicken, right? Yeah, with chicken. <laughs> yeah. Any poultry is an issue. Yeah. The beef is never an issue. Yeah. But with chicken, it's like our wings, I feel like <laughs> we still have to, not as much, not as much anymore. It's definitely when we not, first, not as when much. When we first started putting our wings, I was every single person. So you didn't even cook these wings. You didn't even cook these wings. It's bleeding. I was like, there's not even, there's no blood in there. What are you talking about? Like, I mean, that's not how I would answer, but. No, he answered it that way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with wings, he kind of should, though, you know what I mean? You know, <laughs> but, yeah, it was, it's not as much now. We still have to answer it and explain what the, what the pink color means. So I put these, I put your wings here at Smokehouse. I'm not saying that because we're sitting at this table. I'm not saying it because we do this podcast together. I'm not saying it because Mike's our guest and he's the guy in the kitchen Even also. if those are the reasons, I'll accept it. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I, I do put these wings in top three because they're different. Yeah, yeah You can't different. really get yeah. smoked wings anywhere throughout all of Westchester that I've seen. Uh, I've still now yet to be to a couple other barbecue spots around here that you guys probably know of. But... Is there anywhere else really in this general vic- uh, vicinity that you can get smoked wings a smoke at? Smoke grilled wing? I don't think so. And considering people are listening all over the U.S. too, you know, you might have an Anthony's Coal Fire Pizza by you. I put those in my top wings too yeah. because they're different. Those are good too. You know, it's a yeah. flash fry. They throw them back under that uh, coal fire oven. They there. fry them. I thought it was all in the. Um, I think pizza they hit it. Pizza. It's all in the oven. I, I, all yeah. of it. I think they hit it to a flash. You know, for the longest time, Mike respected them so much because they didn't have blue cheese. <laughs> You got to respect a guy. That's not a blue cheese you know wing. I mean? Yeah, you got to respect somebody who just says no. You know what I mean? Like, that's the honest, on, my honest thing. Like, you know, you, you try to, like, satisfy customers, but it's like, you got to say no to, you know? It's a ballsy a move to restaurant. say no to blue cheese. Yeah. You, it's a ballsy move. So, future reference, because I always get the blue cheese <laughs> with the wings. <laughs> now I know that he's going to be in the back of the kitchen. No, we, a so we serve blue cheese. We're cool with that. But like well, Justin, cool Justin has put a pretty big stance, and the stance is basically ranches for rookies. Yes, and right. he refuses. I, I, I made I'm a homemade ranch. ranch. I told him like, no, we can make no. homemade ranch, all oh, fresh so herbs and everything. Carry, 
And he was like, no, we're more. not serving ranch. Ranch is for rookies. And when a server walks in the back, like, my customer really wants ranch. And she's like, Mike said he'll make it for him or something like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Justin basically says, tell that customer ranch is for rookies. <laughs> <laughs> He's also tried to ban somebody for eating wings with a fork and knife. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. I'm which not is, which is just wrong, yeah. you know? That's, that, I, I Are you sure you him back in the kitchen again <laughs> where he's away from the guests? <laughs> I stand behind that decision. If, fork and knife. if you eat wings with fork and knife, we can't be friends. <laughs> it's like the Seinfeld with the Snickers bar. Right? We'll go back to with the latex yeah, gloves. Would you, would you hand him a pair of gloves instead of a fork and knife? I would prefer the gloves over a fork okay. and knife. Yeah. yeah, Especially during this. Yeah, especially now. <laughs> yeah. What, what do you consider to be like your creme de creme back there of what you cook in Smokehouse? Like that one item that stands out that you know, you're proud of sh- as shit of. I got it. it is the brisket that we yeah. just talked about. Yeah, it over really the ribs. Is. Yeah, it really is the brisket. Is you know, I've I've I, to, I I said it before. I've never seen not never, but it's been a long time since I've seen him as happy professionally as recently <laughs> with the brisket. You know what the thing about it is is like I, I think I've cooked a lot of things real well, but I'm not a big recipe guy. I'm not a big like every time I make something, I write it down and write down the steps. And sometimes I I get it right, and sometimes I'm like it needs a lot of work and things like that. I've gotten better with that a little bit over the years. But the brisket is just something we didn't nail once. Like, we procedurally, like, got it down. I'm not saying it's, like, perfect 100% of the time, but, like, it comes out of the kitchen really good every night. And uh, I'm really proud of it. i got to be honest. I, I'm, like, mental golf clapping. I know nobody <laughs> could hear that over the audio, but, like... I'm excited yeah. to try this brisket. Yeah. What's number two? Ribs? I don't know. <laughs> i, I, I got to think about that for a minute. I'm not sure. There's so many. I'm going to interrupt you in a second with that. I'm <laughs> just going to pop in. I mean, there's so many various things that you guys have done out here that, you know, a lot of places don't do. And uh, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again, too, where you guys are casing your own sausage in the back. I know that's not really we, on we the don't menu do that at this moment. Yeah, Correct. Sure. I, I know that, but it's something that was being done, yeah. period. Yeah. But that, like, just that's that extra step that goes to show hey, we're doing real things here and we're not just buying something from Restaurant Depot and throwing it in the freezer and then taking it out for you. Yeah. You guys are making your empanadas from scratch. These are things that most places don't really do. They'll just buy it in a box, put it on the plate, and act like somebody made it in the back. Six bucks on the plate. <laughs> what? On the plate. On the plate. <laughs> on the plate. <laughs> we just always joke around when a, uh, a food vendor will news. come in, they'll try to sell us something and they'll say something like that. I got That's these jalapeno the, like, poppers phrase. tonight, and uh, just put it on a plate. It's good to go. Like you know, five seventy-five your cost on a plate, right to your customers. <laughs> Is that a sales pitch? That That's like hundred percent a sales pitch, word for word. I'm yeah. like so disgusted and like turned <laughs> off by that. I mean, are these rookie guys that are just coming in fresh, or yeah. it, it's almost insulting? Actually, it's, it's almost very like, Is this what you think of yeah. what we do here? You know, especially yeah. when they talk about like a pre-portioned frozen stuffed cordon bleu chicken breast. Some, <laughs> some nonsense <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's tough. I, I mean, this is this stuff happens out there, though. And I'm sure it's like time and time again that it occurs. Uh, yeah. I, I am but not. That's, that's, happy. What, that's why you got to deal with quality vendors, people who know you and your product and what you're trying to do. Jay, is there a cocktail or something you've done behind the bar that you were really proud of? Well, fucking who's interviewing who? <laughs> <laughs> That was uh, a smooth pivot. Spe- like that. Specifically, <laughs> like, yeah, there are things that have been done behind the bar that you're proud of that you go, oh, that's a great recipe. Uh, we Do you did keep something. track of all your recipes? Do you have, like, a recipe? Yeah, I have a little book. Yeah. I have a little book. I actually have a whole barbecue cocktail recipe nice. guide. I've been saving it for a long time. Bar- but there's barbecue a lot of... Barbecue cocktail recipe guide. What? What? What's explain, a barbecue explain cocktail? What that is. They're all barbecue-themed cocktails. Yeah. Barbecue. Like, a lot of activated like charcoal what? stuff in there. Okay. You know, things that uh, appeal to the barbecue... Uh, blend of people, but like we'll Actually, share that. Activated charcoal, charcoal. charcoal does that's, not appeal that's to me. That's one of those simple. <laughs> that's one of those simple ingredients. Well, like it, this was also a phase then. This is an old recipe <laughs> build that we've got going here. You just got <laughs> just got laughing me the whole show. What is this? You know, a lot of guys walk into the bar like you got anything with activated charcoal. <laughs> I'm really looking for a drink that's going to turn my whole mouth black. <laughs> now we did, we did also just do something come winter. I was looking to go enter cocktail into a competition. I didn't realize that the competition ended two days before I was ready to turn it in. But it was a twist off of New York Sour. Um, and with that, I was like, oh, this is going to be fantastic. Can't get this little Malbec pour on the top here. We had, uh, oh, shit, what is it even called? I've been away from the bar for so long. 
a little allspice through there, some rosemary. This was a, a very sexy little cocktail, rye based, a little spice to it. I guys, you're looking at me like this thing doesn't work. Trust me. I, I got I'm things not a fan of rosemary in my cocktail. I gotta be honest. <laughs> you wouldn't you wouldn't know unless I told you it was there. You know, it all just blends together. Yeah, unless there's a potato in there or something like that. Like, <laughs> I really don't need rosemary. <laughs> Maybe a piece of bacon. <laughs> yeah. Or like you know, a lamb chop. <laughs> you're talking about cocktails when I was here filling in too. I was just like, oh, this whole Sunday brunch thing we're doing. I was like, just we gotta get like we gotta do the Bloody Mary with the pork belly skewer coming out the top. Yeah, you I was were like, That's, all about that. I'm still about that That's life. Too much. And Just was just like, no, yeah. we don't put anything in Bloody Marys. And I was like, okay. After Ranch is for Rookies, eating your chicken wings with a fork and knife, Justin is dead set against putting cheeseburgers on top of Bloody Marys. And I gotta be honest, you're with I him completely on that. agree with right? <laughs> I agree with the cheeseburgers not in there. But like the pork belly, yeah, I would like to take a little bite of pork belly while having a Bloody Mary. You just order some pork belly and then yeah. fuck, dip it in there and Bloody Mary. <laughs> it's just so accurate to everything. All right, but so you guys now to. Are you a Wendy's? Are you a French fry in your chocolate frosty? I don't do of? Wendy's. I don't do fast food like that. I mean, I don't either. But have you ever had French <laughs> no, fries? No, I would in not stick a French fry in my frosty. No, you're missing out. Yeah, <laughs> See, you are missing out on that. You're not really helping this whole case of ranch for rookies right now. But that's that's, that's a, not a rookie move. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, not a rookie move. I I don't trust that bit one bit. I know those people are out there and they exist with the I'm French fry. Sitting, that's sitting right with here. Three of them. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Can he, I get it? Justin talked about that for months because he gave up. Whatever for for fried, Lent, fried food, fried food for yeah. Lent. That that was his that was his uh, go to like guilt mill and dipping French fries in his frosty. Yeah, for not, some reason it works. Not for me. Chocolate frosty is one of the great American <laughs> icons, I think. So with you both being partners, <laughs> there's so many partnerships that don't work out, and guys are friends at first. They go into a business, they have arguments about things, and then with that said, they have this breaking point moment where the business is not doing successfully. Uh, it's not doing so well. We've and got a few of those. Sure. Well, those points happen in everybody's life as far as being an entrepreneur. Every other Tuesday. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Usually Wednesdays for me. <laughs> and every time that I've been around that we've done something, whether it be like, you know, the menu design stuff or you guys working on something, it seems like you both really keep that line in the sand as far as, no, nah, it's a front of house, ish, house issue. We're leaving that one adjust. It's back of house issue. I'm leaving that to Mike. They make those decisions. Is that kind of just something that you come together and worked out on your own or just worked out that way? We make it look like it. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think you're just not around for a lot of the conversations. <laughs> I, I think we've definitely, like, as the business has grown, we've learned what we're good at, I guess I would say. But we both interfere with each other's thing. Like to say, like I leave it to Justin or Justin leaves it to me is, is just not the way we do it. I, I think what works is that we're not afraid to tell each other what we think truthfully, and we don't just like say that's Justin's thing. Like, yeah, it might be his decision on on social media or marketing things, but as Justin would say, like I definitely give him my opinion. He doesn't yeah. always follow it, you know. And it's kind of the same thing in the in the kitchen. But I think what works is that we're not afraid to to speak, you know, speak about it, speak out about what we don't like or what we like or what we think needs to happen. But where you're, where you're saying, you know, give your opinion, are you still saying that gives just essentially final say on front of house kind of deal? or Definitely. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. I mean, that is a line. But it's final say with his input. like in Sure. Both. And yeah. you're taking it in. How do you decide when you're passionate about one direction, he's passionate about another direction? Is there a meeting in the middle? Does that work? Depends I think the, the whole the whole yeah. issue might just get shelved. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably derailed us as much as it's helped yeah. us at times. But that's, we're not helping you, are we? I, I think we're just not afraid to call each other out on yeah. on whatever you know on on anything. And it, you know, even though at times it it, it has gotten ugly, truthfully, between us. But uh, I think we both know the other person like wants the best for the business and everything. And uh, you just you're not afraid to to speak. So. I mean, I don't think that you would have come we, this far with this much growth without kind of being able to make a partnership work where you can get into those bouts and still just come out unscathed, if you will. We've also done a pretty good job of separating work from, yeah. like, personal life. Like, if we go if we go out to dinner or something, yeah, personally, we don't, we don't, we don't, talk, about we don't it. talk about it. Yeah. Do you guys go Dutch on He's, the bill? or? <laughs> 
<laughs> so it depends on the night. Depends on how well we're doing that month. I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, I think we're Justin just. But yeah, so I mean, sense. we could have a bloodbath argument here yeah. during the day and then go out to dinner, and no one yeah. will know the difference. Yeah, I mean, he's gonna be the best man at my wedding in a couple months, <laughs> like, and there are days that I can't freaking stand the guy. Have you been doing a lot of home cooking, considering? Uh, I've actually been working during this whole thing, to be honest. Yeah, so I, I have gotten as easy as the rest of us. Yeah, um, my girlfriend and I do do cook at home a lot, but um, I haven't felt that whole pandemic thing where you're just kind of like sitting at home and things like that. I'm I'm grateful for the fact that we've been working, but um, did I you not want to say fiance? I have a hard time saying that. I gotta be honest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just got used to girlfriend. Like, I, you know I, what I mean, so I'm totally by the time we you. get married, I'll, I think I'll get used to fiance. I, mean, I, I get it. I yeah. get it. You, when you get married, you call your wife your fiance. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm always a little behind. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> the if voice. she was here right now, she would agree with me. Right? <laughs> uh, but I'm sorry. Continue. Sure, you're doing a lot of cooking at home. Well, no, I think he's saying he's not doing a lot of cooking at home. No, yeah, they I mean, followed up with, we're doing a lot of cooking at home. Yeah, I mean, we, have, we do cook at home a lot, to be honest. When I'm off, I, we don't really like to get takeout. I do like to cook at home. But, um, you know, I haven't been home seven days a week. But we've been working during this whole thing, which we're, we're glad we takeout was able to kind of keep, keep on doing this thing during this whole thing. But uh, we do cook a lot at home. And she, she's actually, she's a better cook than me, truthfully. So um, not with barbecue and things like that, but a home cook, like 100%. He just scored so many brownie points. <laughs> and babe, fast forward to minute 18 and 26 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> okay, what kind that. of things does she cook? She's, uh, I mean, her, her father actually owned, uh, owned a restaurant and uh, he's a big Italian cook and things like that. He's, he's got his sauce game down pretty good and uh, he's really um, kind of like a simple cook, like really not too many ingredients, kind of the same thing we were talking about the brisket. He'll like pick out the perfect olive oil, pick out the right salt, that kind of thing, and really not like not to do much to it, and it comes out really good. She's kind of like that. Just know? like the feels like just like a traditional yeah. American meal kind yeah, of deal. Exactly. Yeah, I'm yeah. a big fan of that. Yeah, exactly. Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> so what kind of olive oil she's? <laughs> <laughs> we only have one olive oil in the house, but her father has like twenty. I'm kidding. I'm yeah. kidding. All right, so we're getting back into full swing, right? Where there's gonna happen. Hold on, hold on. Ask him where you met her. Smokehouse. Where'd you? So where'd you? Yeah, meet? We, where'd you meet her? We did meet at. Where'd you meet uh, your girlfriend? We did meet at the original Smokehouse. Just Justin hired her. I was so I can save you him telling you this. <laughs> I was against it, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I wound, I wound up proposing to her a couple years later. So. Yeah, it's a true love story. That's beautiful. <laughs> She's full gonna sweet. love this part. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm with it. I'm with it. There you go, Alec. Um. All right, but. Slow down for a second before I get so sidetracked. Just to clear it up, she no longer works here. Yeah. Well, yeah, obviously. obviously, HR would have a problem. Uh, Mike's HR. Yeah. (laughs) HR HR probably would have a problem. (laughs) Now, we said last week. You don't know me. HR does have a problem with that kind of stuff. (laughs) We said last week, too, that right now Smokehouse is on a smaller menu, but everything is starting to open back up again. And with that said, I think we discussed that you might still have a smaller menu when you just open back up just to get bearings straight. We, and then we the, might always have a smaller menu. <laughs> and we might never go back. I mean, how small is the menu right now? How many pretty items small, are on this? It's pretty small. Uh, I don't know. How many, how many things do we take off? I mean, we probably took about 25% of the menu yeah. off during this but uh you know truthfully it's been like a conversation for years like could we do things a little better a little bit more efficiently and things like that and um this was like just the straw that broke broke the camel's back or whatever you know we're just like we had to do this in order to survive during this process we could not run the same kitchen payroll and the same hours that we were running prior to this and you know you get into this you know you want to satisfy people you want to like be creative and come up with new dishes and you want to like have something for everybody but it's not always the right business decision to do that. And um, sometimes maybe it takes something like this to like to be like, we need to just nail these ribs every night in order for people to want to order from us. And we don't need to have every little thing in the world, you know. And we took off a bunch of, a bunch of the things right away. I think we like pivoted like pretty early in this, like kind of like saw what was coming and kind of like was like, we need to make decisions really quick. And um, I think I think it worked out for us. You never really know if we like alienated some people, but I think we made a lot of the right decisions. So you took menu items off based upon sales numbers, I presume? 
Well, it, no. I mean, I really couldn't be sales numbers because what sales numbers during a pandemic can you compare to? Well, you knew previously, though. Yeah, what, we knew previous, but it, it more had to do with prep time. Um, things like, like fresh fish was the first thing to come off. Like, like we just couldn't buy salmon. And the, originally, the fish market's actually closed in the be, in the early stages. Yeah, I remember. And like, we certainly didn't want to get stuck with uh, fresh fish that like we didn't want to freeze. You know what I mean? And things like that. And we didn't know how many we were going to sell. Like, this thing has kind of rode the waves of like what people were looking for. And in the early stages, it was like all value driven. Like, we had to come up with family meals. People did not want to spend a lot of money. Justin came up with like a fifty dollar family for four type of package of a lot of affordable type fresh items that we could do. And then like a couple weeks after that, we were just doing like quarts of soups, quarts of stocks, um, things like that, like really value driven type items. And then like now we're like three months into it. I think it's really changed pace. And now we kind of have that urge to bring back some of our menu items, but we want to be careful with it because we've really kind of gotten the menu down to something we can handle without a ton of overall labor. So then moving forward, You'll keep that labor down by keeping some of these items off, which in turn creates more profitability at the end of the day. No, They're also gonna it's just the entire process, the entire like stream uh, oper- operation yeah. is smoother, and we could just get through. I don't. I don't even think it would like. Tell me if you disagree, but I don't think it's really about like raw profitability. It's about like putting out stuff every single day, like in a profitable way that you're really proud of rather yeah. than having 20 items that you like kind of struggle to produce every day. We can you know, focus on. Yeah, that you can focus on. Like these are our signature items. We're yeah. going to focus on them and you're going to eat them and they're going to be the best brisket you had. Yeah, I mean it even goes to like taking things out of the smoker so you can focus on the brisket. We were smoking meatballs and we were smoking <laughs> tomatoes to make things and like they were all good. You know Those what I mean? The sliders were pretty damn good though. I got to say that. <laughs> yeah, A lot good. of it's good and I think you even get like you know, like your own your own worst enemy where you like want to create new stuff and people like comment on your Instagram pages like, why don't you guys do this? And you want to do it, but you, you just got to be careful where it like takes you away from what you're originally trying to do. You know, you don't think you're going to put out inferior ribs or anything, but when you're trying to handle 33 menu items as opposed to 25, you know, it's easy for things not to go perfectly each night. That was like the most concise like rationale to be <laughs> pulling things out that I think you I could, came a long way from chili dogs. <laughs> not, not, not I mean, those remember. chili dogs were banging. Though. They were not very good. Yeah. You got to remember too. Each item has like its sub items. Yeah. So it's not just pulling one item off the mouth. That sauce for that item and yeah. this thing. Yeah. Like those thing, meatballs, you know. the sliders were a perfect example. Yeah. To make yeah. the sliders, you have to smoke the tomatoes to make the tomato sauce. Yeah. You put like yeah. two spoons of tomato sauce. And they were good, slider. and people liked them. So yeah. like, but you know what I mean? Hours of work just to get to a meatball slider. Yeah. And you, and you also trying to balance like what the CDC and health departments are trying to require, and like we don't want to have too many people back there, and we want the shifts to be different, and there's like a lot of things to balance, and it just like goes back to like let's just do what we know how to do, you know, and like hopefully that's enough. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess that makes a lot of sense at the end of the day. Do you think the same clientele that are going to be in here sitting down eating and having drinks? are going to pull away from a lot of the to-go orders that you've been doing or do you think there'll be two different clientels and your sales will even surpass what they've kind of just been anyway there's no way they're going to surpass because we're going to be at half capacity so well you'll have the takeout as well though i'm saying yeah no i think the takeout numbers will will, will they're not going to be not, i don't think they'll go i don't think they'll disappear but they're not going to be as strong as they are now because that most not most of those but a certain percentage of those people will go out to go back to going out to eat when they want to get up, go out to eat and cooking at home when they want to cook at home. And profits will be up being able to sell alcohol at tables, which is great. Hopefully. Hopefully. I just want to make sure everyone don't get in one of those situations where you lose money when you're making money. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, He's joking nooms earlier as they had a battle about... Uh, let's no not even get into There's it. No it's just the ridiculous. point is, just don't argue with Justin. <laughs> yeah, ex- exactly that. Yes. <laughs> All right. I, I think there's no question though that there's going to be losses. Like I'm not even talking about us. It's just you need to get hopefully back to closer, and you almost like feel like your responsibility to kind of like open and do what you can. But if we are able to open at 25 percent capacity, there's no way you can make money. Like it's just almost impossible you know i mean there's no way the takeout numbers will be when like there was no restaurant in the country open it's just not realistic but you kind of like you need this is like just part of the game or whatever you want to call it you need to like serve your customers and like get back to we're hoping eventually 
like we get back to normal, uh, if you decide not to open during this thing, I think it puts you at a disadvantage. It's almost like a marketing expense, kind of weirdly. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it makes a lot of sense. I think. You're going like to have to. We're still here. We're yeah. still doing this. It's the reason why companies go into Times Square and pay ridiculous square foot uh, charges to have a flagship store there. It's like just, it's a visual. It's a marketing expense in the sense that you're out here putting bags out to everybody in the community. Just like, hey, we're here. Don't forget about us. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Is that? <laughs> it was a stretch. I'll just, I get it. It was a stretch. You know what? I'll go fuck myself. It's cool. Why don't you grab another sloop juice bomb? I'll take one too, Jay. It's going to be a weird reopening these doors and trying to serve customers. You know, it's it's gone. I, I said to you before that it's, it was really weird when we first had to close. And it, this thing has gone on so long. It's going to be really weird when we have to open. You're going to have to take down our podcast studio so you can see someone at the stable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're, we're actually not sure what it's even, what are we even, what's it going to look like when you come back in. Yeah. We haven't had a we haven't had a guest come in the front door in three months. Yeah. We, like, we've locked the front door. Yeah. Everybody goes to we, besides staff and you two. We, we don't have anybody else walk in this restaurant for three months. So that's crazy. Yeah. I feel like the first person to walk in, we're all here. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? I know. I let somebody use the bathroom last week, and it was strange. You, know? you make yeah. it sound like this place is all dark and ominous, like the house at the end of the road with the cobwebs <laughs> everywhere and stuff. The place looks like a goddamn restaurant yeah. that's just been formulated to do takeout orders primarily. It, it's going to be fine. They're going to walk in. They're going to be thrilled. To there's sit there's going to be a lot of changes in the kitchen, though, truthfully. Like, they won't like, know that. They're sitting up here. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean, there'll be changes out here, too. Yeah. There'll be, yeah. you know, everybody's going to wear a mask and gloves. And, yeah. Do you guys consider yeah. doing any, like, um, like tents over the tables to keep people socially distant? No, you like a cone of silence. I saw yeah. that. You're uh, seeing all these pictures? Wait, they're not going to wear a mask. Who? People coming into the restaurant. Yeah. They have to wear a mask whenever they're not eating, though. So if they get up from the table to go to the bathroom, they have to put a mask on. So, okay, and I experienced that last week pretty much when I went out at Bar Taco in Westport. How was that? The experience? Yeah. I mean, they did what they could do. What, what, about, what about your experience? Like, how did you feel being in a restaurant yeah. and having to wear a mask? I mean, I'm not... At your table? I would walk around with no mask all day if that was, like, the social thing we could do right now. Right. Uh, but it's not really the thing at this moment. But with that said, sitting at Bar Taco, <laughs> you know, a goofy guy comes over and he's like, Hey, you been here before? You know how like fresh server comes up. Yeah. Huh, first time dining with us. Can I tell you some things about the place? Like blah blah. And, and I'm just like, that. dude, I've been I've been here before. And he's like, oh cool. So then he just throws this wrapped up pencil at me with like the order form, but he wasn't like, oh, but we are doing things different. Go up to the counter to order your food and your drinks. So I'm like staying on this line just to get drinks, and then to the front I realize that everyone's putting their food order in there too, and I'm like. Hey, why didn't you tell me that, dude? That was super hype. I mean, yeah, there's things that are going to be different, and to you working within it, it's going to feel super normal and regular, and at some point, you look at people and you go, this idiot doesn't know to wear his mask while he's going to the bathroom. Like, yo, it's this idiot's probably first time out right or now. Or they're an Uber driver. Exactly, and they don't know. We talked Uber about that last week. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But... I mean, there are changes, and I think that, again, the people that are out right now are not worried at all about coronavirus. They'd be sitting at home cooking in the safety of their house if that was the case. They're not going to I think there's a big difference between the people that have been out. I mean, we were talking about this earlier. The people that have been out going to work every day versus the people who have actually been sitting at home for the last three months. We we kind of desensitized to the way the world is right now. But when you come out, when you decide to come out of your house after three months and you kind of see it, it's all going to yeah. feel so weird. Yeah. And I think that's the that's the difference. Like I don't think we have, we don't have an issue. We were talking about going out to eat or whatever, and it didn't really bother us the idea of it. But we spoke to our family that we wanted to come. Like, you mean outside at, at a restaurant? <laughs> outside, like with other, with other people. <laughs> like I couldn't get. In, I said last week we couldn't get Nicole to want to go. Yeah. You sure you want to go to a restaurant? Like, B, I'm going to need you to be more behind this because this is our... <laughs> this is my business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, stop spreading yeah. that bad gospel, you know? I, I think that's the thing that, like, it's not over the day they reopen, you know? And yeah. this is going to go on in some form or another. Like, hopefully it's not the same way, but, like, you know, we're, we're in this for the next foreseeable future, you yeah. know? In some way, like, there's going to be changes that go on in day-to-day life for the next, I don't know. 
and that's months, what, years. I don't know. And that's the push notification I got to my phone today from Dr. Fauci saying that, yeah, it's it's cool now, but the future is a little bit grim here, uh, and we are going to see spikes again in the future. We'll see a second wave. And we're not really that far off from, like, fall coming around, right? Like, really it's not. around the corner, literally. It's yeah. winter already. What do you mean? It's, it's, almost, it's, that's it's how it feels. almost summer of 2021. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's crazy how fast things happen and how fast they go. So it's like, all right, this little stint that we're... Tomorrow's day like savings. <laughs> No, that happened. Already. That happened already. Yeah. Yeah. But you it know, is like really late, like light, late at night right yeah, now. June, like, I I it's June, I think it's June 21st, 21st yeah. or it's second. It's the longest day. Yes. Like, nah, 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 it's all downhill from I know that because yeah. my aunt's birthday. Uh, yeah. Someone was like, why do you know that? I'm like, because I'm smart. June 22nd <laughs> starts the downhill slide. So I put yeah. rosemary in my cocktail. <laughs> 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 Uh, Jay's not coming back. Anymore. But in this <laughs> in this summertime though too, now with being able to reopen hopefully in a month, inside at least get these restaurants some business before they go bankrupt. Uh, in a few more months, if we get a second wave, then it's like just back to this again. Like, oh, I convert back to a delivery restaurant again in the winter time. Can you imagine a life like that? I, I really hope not because I'm not sure how many times. You could make that transition. Yeah. 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 How many times people will willingly make that transition? Yeah. You know. Well, how do you keep staff if it's just like, oh, God well, that's, damn that's it. That's what I mean. Yeah. Right? We might be able to fight through it one time, but if yeah. this is going to be like a normal thing. You know, it's, if it's a normal thing, that $864 uh, unemployment check that you get every <laughs> week is looking real good for the kid. I wish I got that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, it's more I than mean, I make right now. I know it's somewhere. <laughs> right, right. I, mean, I didn't mean to rub it in. You guys want to come over for dinner? And you come over. I'll get lobster tail. <laughs> I mean, I think a lot of our staff is not gonna, you know, be so quick to come back because of that. Yeah, yeah. Or, and we talked about that last week too. We said the pivot oh, right. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for not tuning in. <laughs> you gotta put it on Google Podcasts. I, I, I it's think, on Google. No, it wasn't. Last week's wasn't up yet. That's no? interesting. We'll have write to check that down that in your notepad. <laughs> Google. I got to be honest. Before you write that down, it's possible. I didn't look. <laughs> I, mean, I, I was going to say that out loud. We need to cover here, right? We got a little history. We talked barbecue. We talked a little bit of cocktails. Activated charcoal. <laughs> pandemic. The, the, I think that was the, a pretty good talk. The future. Catch you all next week. Daylight savings? When does the algorithms part start? <laughs> right now. All right, guys. Good talk. Uh... Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button because, you know, algorithms. You say that every time? Every time. Oh, I thought it was just like, it was dubbed. <laughs> <laughs> I have to <done> that. <laughs> every time. <laughs>